Hello everyone, I am Hussein Khan and I am an Adobe Certified Instructor. Welcome to my channel. I've been using and teaching Adobe applications for the last 10 years. I've also worked on visual effects for independent movies. You will find my IMDB link in the description. In this Adobe After Effects video series, I'll be covering basics to advanced topics. Each video will continue from the previous video, so it's best if you watch it in a sequence. This series is perfect if you are just starting with Adobe After Effects or have used After Effects and wanted to learn the latest features and more. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications of the upcoming videos. There's a lot of fun things to learn, so let's get started. In this video, you will learn the basics of animation in Adobe After Effects. The link to the project files are available in the description. Please download if you like to follow along. There are five building blocks of creating animation in After Effects and they are Position, Opacity, Rotation, Skill and Anchor Point. I'd like to use the acronym TRAPS. T is for Opacity, R is for Rotation, A is for Anchor Point, P is for Position and S is for Scale. Let's see if we can come up with something more interesting. Before we start in any animation, you will need to know the concept of keyframing. In After Effects, keyframing is achieved by placing a diamond shape like indicator in the timeline to start and end a certain action. In this case, we want to move this object from screen left to screen right. We will drop a keyframe at the beginning and one at the end. The in between frames will be interpolated by After Effects. Okay, enough jibber jabber, let's start animating. Let's select the position composition. 0 to position. Ensure that the playhead or the current time indicator is the beginning of the comp. If it's not, you can move that manually. To reveal the position property, you can click on this triangle. Or you can simply use a hotkey or keyboard shortcut P. Yes, P for position. We're going to click on this stopwatch to create the first keyframe. There you go, you just created your first keyframe. What we're going to do now is you're going to drag the CTI to the end of the composition. This is a 5 second composition. You can either push the object to the right of the screen by holding down the shift key or I'll do undo there. You can just use these numbers over here. This is the X position and the Y position. I'm going to use the X position to just drag to the right. You will get a keyframe at the end automatically. So if I click on preview now, you will see that now you have animation that goes from left to right. I'll tap the spacebar to stop the animation. Okay, let's go back to the beginning of the comp. Notice the movement is very linear, meaning it moves in a constant speed. In real life, things don't move in this fashion. If you want to make something more real life-like, we can adopt the concept of slow in, slow out, or in After Effects, it's called Easy Ease. Let's stop the preview and then take the CTI to the beginning of the comp. To select both keyframes at the same time, you just click on the word position over here. Okay, now both keyframes are selected. Please do not click on the stopwatch because you will delete the keyframes. Okay, once the keyframes are selected, we will go to animation and we will use keyframe assistant and we use easy ease or you can just press the F9 on your Windows keyboard. Now if you notice that the keyframes has changed into an hourglass shape, that's an indication to show that now it's a easy ease keyframe. If I were to press the spacebar now, you can see that the movement is a bit more organic. So it starts slow at the beginning, it pricks up speed and then it slows down. If I were to show you the graph editor, you'll see now we have this S curve that's going that way. I'll do an undo here, you'll see that the graph will change to a linear graph. There you go, that was the before, very linear. And if I were to do undo, you see now it's, it's a S curve. I'm going to close the graph editor. Let's stop the playback by clicking on the spacebar. Let's go back to the beginning of the comp. You, if I were to change this back to a linear keyframe, you have to hold down the control or the command key and click once on the keyframe. So now it's back to the diamond shape. You can also create animation going up and down. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to create a first keyframe. 
I'm going to drag the CTI to again to the end of the comp. I'm going to grab the box or the shape and then push it up and hold on the shift key. Let me write it up there. And now if I click the spacebar or tap the spacebar, you can see now it goes upwards. If I would stop to play back, okay, I'm going to just do undo to go back to the situation where we don't have the keyframes. I'd like to show you something else. If I were to create the position keyframes again by clicking on the stopwatch and then dragging the CTI to the end, drag it over there. Okay. We are back to our first example. I'm going to show you something else that's over here. If you can see that you have these Bezier handles over here, if I were to click and drag the Bezier handles, you're actually reshaping the curve. If I were to press the space bar now, you can see the object goes upwards and then goes to the right. Because what you've done is you just manipulated the shape of the Bezier curve. Let's stop that. Go back to the beginning. And we have one over here as well. I'm going to drag that down. If I press space bar again, you can see the movement of the object. that so what if you want to create an animation that takes this object to upwards around somewhere in the middle of the comp and then bring back down okay in that case we have to create three keyframes so let me create the, create the first keyframe and i'll take this to the end click and drag it to the right okay and then we'll come back somewhere in in the middle just click and drag this upwards you can hold on the shift key if you want to and now we have a third keyframe. So what's going to happen now is if I press the spacebar, it could, goes upwards because of the center keyframe and then comes back down. Let's stop that. So that's basically how the position keyframe works. The next thing we're going to learn is about the scale property. Select the 03 scale composition, select the layer and press S on your keyboard to reveal the scale property. The default property is 100% and is measured in percentage. In fact, we can go beyond 100%. With the CTI parked at the beginning of the comp, change the value of the scale to 10%. Click the stopwatch to set the first keyframe. Take the CTI to the end of the comp and let's change it back to 100%. So if I were to do a preview on this now, if I press the spacebar to preview, you can see that the scale is now animating. Okay, this is a five second comp, so it's a bit slow. I'm gonna hit the spacebar to again to stop. So that's basically what the scale property does what it does is actually scales from the middle of the object or in this case the box because the anchor point is sitting in the middle of the box so i'll show you in a bit how to change that but before that i want to uh, cast your eye down to this uh, property over here where you see that you have two numbers one on the left and there's a one on the right so actually you can break the link over here if i were to break this little chain over here this little icon click on that to break the chain I can now scale it individually I can scale it upwards or in the Y axis and also the X axis so we can change the shape of the shape if you want to by breaking the chain right so I'm gonna do undo to go back to the 10% and put the chain back on okay I'm gonna show you the other thing that we spoke about is to to change the anchor point position for the scale property okay so if i want to bring this back to 100 percent all right so we there's nothing going on at the moment using what we call the pan behind tool it's called the pan behind tool and also it's called the anchor point tool so if you click that icon or click that tool over there if I bring it back into the comp and just start moving this anchor point around, if I put the anchor point to the, the bottom left of the uh, of the object, if I do scaling now, 
but use a scale see it scales that way okay so it all dependent on the where the anchor point is positioned or the position of the anchor point okay if i were to change that to maybe somewhere up here or down here i can change the position so that becomes something like that okay if you want to reset back the anchor point to the middle of the just set this back to 100 if i want to reposition the anchor point into middle of the object you can manually move it but there's a better way actually so if i were to go to layer transform and i would say center anchor point to layer content so it goes back into the middle okay so that's basically it, uh, what the scale property can do for you scales it up from the middle where the anchor point is or it scales up from any part of where the anchor point is next we'll go to rotation property Let's talk about how to create rotation. Choose the 04 rotation comp, select the layer and press R on your keyboard to reveal the rotation property. You will see that you have two numbers over here, right? You have the single digit and the double digit. So let's talk about the double digit number first. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in a keyframe at the beginning of the comp and drag the CTI to the end of the comp and let's put in number here let's say we put in 180 degrees yeah that should make it half a turn so now you can see that you have actually a, a rotation animation so if I were to change this to let's say 360 that would mean that it's gonna go one full circle right so instead of putting 360 let's say if i want to rotate this a few times down the five second time point i do not have to use the second number what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the back to the end of the comb see what it did there it changed the 360 to one full rotation if i would change this to five rotations in the five second time segment if i press play now you can see it rotates five times that's the reason we have two numbers there one is actually for the rotation the other one is actually rotating in the degrees so that's how easy it is to rotate again we have an anchor point where we can get it to rotate either from the middle of the object or I can use my again my anchor point tool like what we did in the previous lesson is to change the rotation point to maybe somewhere here and if I do a rotation now now you see it rotates on the anchor point position stop that i'm going to change back the anchor point to the middle we go to layer transform center anchor point to layer content so that's the basics of rotation i'm sure if you combine with the other animation tool you come up with some awesome looking animation so next we're going to talk about opacity Another word for opacity is transparency. So if you can say the letter T coincides with transparency. If I select the layer, opacity layer, press T instead of O to reveal the opacity property. I'll drop in a keyframe at the beginning of the comp and let's take it to the end and let's change the opacity to zero, which means it becomes invisible. So if I were to play now, you can see it changes from opaque to opacity. That's how easy it is to use the opacity property, right? So I will undo that, take off the keyframes and I can actually use my slider here to make it fade away. Does it go beyond 100%? No, it does not. If I put it 200%, it's gonna still gonna be the same. So there's only one property in percentage for the opacity and that's how you do it. Next, we're gonna talk about the anchor point property. Last but not least, we have the anchor point or sometimes it's called the pivot point. Open the anchor point comp, 06 anchor point. All objects in After Effects have their pivot points in the middle of the object. You can change the position of this pivot point in two ways. First, using the anchor point property, which is by pressing A on the keyboard, the anchor point for this particular layer. Here you have two numbers, which is the X and Y numbers. And I, if I just click and drag, you can see now the object moves, but the anchor point stays in the middle. So if I were to combine this with, uh, let's say, rotation property, if I press Shift and press R on my keyboard to reveal the rotation property, 
if I were to rotate now, you see that it moves around that anchor point. Okay, I'll do it and undo that. And if I were to change that to something else, maybe anchor point is that way. And if I rotate now, see it rotates now that way. So you actually use the anchor point in conjunction with the other four properties. You can also use the anchor point tool up here to move your anchor point around. So if I were to select back this layer, you can see I can move the anchor point around here like we did the in the other sessions. So I can put it over here and then if I will use it now with the the scale property, which I press, I'm going to press my shift and S on my keyboard to reveal the scale property in conjunction with the other ones. And if I were to use this now, you can see that now anchor point is actually animating from that point over there. All right again to reset the anchor point go up to layer transform and then center anchor point to layer content All right so the anchor point really is not an uh, animation property you can animate though you, you can animate it because it has a it has a stopwatch you can use it in conjunction with the other properties to make your animation even better those are the five animation properties in After Effects which you need to know. These are the basic ones. Again, it's going to be position, scale, rotation, opacity, and anchor point. So that's the end of this particular lesson. So I hope you have learned something. Please subscribe the channel and hit the like button. And also click on the notification icon so you will get the notification for the next lesson. Okay, so I'll see you soon and take care.